Let's talk to Ankyo Briggs now. Hello, Ankyo. Hi. Yeah, uh, we understand that you are a strong advocate for good governance. So if you want to assess the level of uh, security in Nigeria, what would be your assessment? Um, there is no security um, in Nigeria. That is the, um, that is the assessment. Um, you have with you a retired, uh, a retired colonel who has a um, um, well-respected background in, in the topic. Now, I am speaking... Um, I am speaking as um, a citizen, and as a citizen, therefore, that is um, is concerned about um, my security and the security of um, of others. Um, when it comes to national security, um, where Tony is referring to uh, internal colonization um, that has become uh, political, that has become sectionalized, um, even religious. Um, where a group of people have decided um, that Nigeria will be insecure um, based on um, their desire to colonize um, uh, people of a particular race. Thank you. People Hello. Hello? Yes, you, you made a statement now that some persons have decided that Nigeria will be insecure. That might be a very yes. good statement. Now, that Nigeria will be insecure, will be colonized. Look, if it is not a decision, um, why have we found ourselves in, um, in the situation where the Northeast is completely overrun, um, the, uh, the Christian areas, the uh, southern Kaduna killings is just ongoing. Um, uh, anybody that attempts to speak against what is happening uh, is being silenced in some way uh, or the other. There is a high level of um, of insecurity, political insecurity, uh, human insecurity. Um, strangers are coming in, we're told, from outside Nigeria. Um, I see strangers in my community that uh, don't have Nigerian features. I know that they're not Nigerians by just looking at them. If people say it's not true, maybe it's time that we start to um, uh, do DNA tests um, and find out who, who actually is a Nigerian and who is not a Nigerian. You know, so definitely uh, there is a group of people that have decided that Nigeria will be the way that it is today. And that's what we're discussing. Okay, I'll come back to you in a bit. Let's talk to SOK now in south of that report. And Amnesty International has actually talked to the government to see how they can solve this particular problem. Your reaction, please. Um, well, you see, um, the question is, is the government, this government, uh, under whom um, these killings have gone on um, for close to um, six years now, five, six years, um, are they prepared? Do they even accept what we are saying that um, uh, that by some reports, uh, per, um, international bodies that have carried out report um, investigations are saying that there is genocide going on in Nigeria? It's not me and Q Briggs just saying it. Um, this this is reports that um, have come out that that is what is going on because there is a fixed number. Um, in international calculation where um, uh, activities of where people are fighting or where there is a war, where people are being killed, when it becomes uh, genocidal. And in, uh, with the figures coming out of, um, out of what is happening in Nigeria, what is happening in uh, southern Kaduna, what is um, the, uh, the, the physical overtake, overrun, uh, very clearly of a certain... A characteristic type of people um, in our region, in our areas. I keep saying in our communities because like Tony tried to clarify for you so that you don't get worried about broadcasting rules. I am saying to you that I don't know about any other person, but I tell you that there are people in my community that just came in in waves and they don't belong to my community. There are people in Rivers in Port Harcourt today, along Abba Road, that are there 
selling dollars. How many people are buying dollars and traveling out of River State and Port Harcourt that there are so many of them? These are visual confirmation that these things we are saying is what is going on in Nigeria. And so, like I said, if, if, if you recall, there is a gentleman called Dr. Um, Obadiah Milafia. Now, that's a very fine gentleman. And he is from southern Kaduna. And he finally, finally spoke up. And he works in a place where the, uh, it's in Jos, Kuri. And he's lost his job. Uh, he's being harassed right now by the uh, uh, by the security system. And so what we are saying as Nigerians is that this is going on and it is going on against Christians. We, we've highlighted the fact that the N NNPC is being run by a particular set of people. We've yes. highlighted that the security is in the hands of a particular yes. uh, set of people. You okay. know, so as far as we are concerned, these are things that are going on in Nigeria against a particular yes. people, against Christians, against Southerners, against uh, uh, people in the Middle Belt. And it is a reality, and we must speak about it whether government likes it or not we must speak about it okay well said from your meeting with united nations delegates in nigeria of course as they look to help nigeria in tackling this particular one let's talk to anki brickstar hello anki are you there yes i am uh, you, you just heard mr president as he talked to u.n delegates uh, of course what's your reaction to mr president's you know speech well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you didn't actually run um, the video because I have the clip, uh, is the uh, video clip um, that that I have seen and um, I have uh, listened to. Now, first of all, um, holding meetings, whether with security chiefs or with uh, UN, um, does not provide security for Nigeria. Um, I have said before that the president contradicts, um, contradicts himself. Now, what I mean by that is that he is the chief security officer of Nigeria, final, total. He is at the head of it. Now, if it will take um, UN delegates to fly into Nigeria and meet with the president of um of Nigeria to discuss uh, the security situation, and um, the, the 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 president therefore um, accepting that they are here uh, for either security purposes, which is almost laughable, or that they are here to uh, for fact finding. I, I really fail to see where he's saying to them that uh, wherever they need help where they need, uh, where their work can be made uh, comfortable and easy for them, that uh, they should let uh, him know. I believe he means by that the, uh, the federal government, which uh, obviously seems to be him, um, that they should let him know. I don't, I mean, how does that provide security? How does that answer the questions that we are raising? How does that secure the uh, the um, the people that are crying out in mm -hmm. Oyo or, or the, yesterday or, or or day before yesterday. And let me also make one uh, point of observation: there is nothing the United Nations is doing in Nigeria for decades that is not based, starting and ending mm -hmm. in the um, uh, in the north. They may have presence in other parts of Nigeria. But honestly, whatever things that the United Nations have carried out in Nigeria, whether it is a, a help when in time of when uh, people are made uh, displaced uh, persons in their, in their own uh, indigenous land, or whatever the UN comes to do, they do it, they concentrate uh, in the north. So whatever the UN is doing is not providing any type of uh, security uh, for the southern part, uh, southern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. is unable. They have agreed 
the chief of staff, army staff, have said it in the past. Um, the, the president himself recently have said that he has done his best. He said, I have done my best. He also accepted that the army have also done his, his best. And he also said that their best is not even good enough. What, what are we doing? The, uh, uh, we keep on analyzing these things and we come exactly. across as people who are just talking. We're not. We're preferring solutions. And we've talked about restructuring this country. We've talked about if you restructure this country, you give uh, the rights. If you devolve power, you give the right to the, uh, to the federating unit. Who, what is a federating unit? The federating unit is the 36 states. You allow the governors to provide security for themselves so that people can be stopped when they are coming into River State. They can be stopped at the border with Abia. They can be stopped at the border with Bayelsa. And you ask them, who are you? Show your identity. If you are a Nigerian, what local government are you coming from? What are you coming to do in, uh, yes. in Portaco? What is your address in Portaco? You just allow people to come in and kill people anyhow. And you keep saying you're powerless. If you're powerless, then allow the people. How do you say people should disarm? We're now hearing that uh, there is a group that, uh, that they will start going uh, in River State or wherever they choose to, uh, to do house-to-house -house searches and, uh, and collect arms. And I have said it publicly that wherever they, they've made this decision in Southern Kaduna, in other places where they disarm people, the next thing is that killers move in and start killing because okay. the people not um, uh, cannot uh, uh, defend themselves. Defense, defending your person as a person is a is a basic human right that Nigeria signed into as a member of the United Nations. It is a basic right given to us by God Almighty himself that we have a right to protect ourselves. If the government that have sworn that uses our oil money to buy arms cannot protect us, to pay soldiers cannot protect us, they must allow us to use our resources to buy arms, to train our people okay. legally, to protect uh, ourselves. Okay. You put a bar on your door. Why do you put bars on your door? You don't want thieves to come in and kill you. So if you can do that to your house, why can the governors not be allowed to protect their states? For okay. uh, thank you. Well, we understand your point because you are a very, very strong advocate for good governance. And of course, looking at the, situ the security situation in Nigeria, it begs for urgent attention now let's talk to Ezoki right now Ezoki, are you there yes i am now according to reports also uh, from that meeting president Mohamed Buhari uh, held with u.n delegates u.n uh, of course they asked Buhari to actually join uh you know dialogue with force to end insecurity in nigeria your take on that well, the, the, the call for joining dialogue and uh, force, I mean, that's the, the stick and uh, carrot approach. Haven't we been paying uh, Boko Harams? We have in certain times that we pay them, and they use these monies that we give them to buy more ammunition and to fight us and to get more stronger. Now, the question is, have we used enough force, you know, to your question? I don't think you know, that we have that determination. It says there is something that bothers me here. You know, I, you know, sometimes in, in many forums, when we talk about the way we are being attacked, some people say, well, they're not the people. Don't make it be like it's a certain people. But as long as you keep failing to bring the perpetrators, how many of Boko Haram members, I mean, you talk about stick and carrot, it's, it's laughable. You see people who have been killing, maiming, raping, doing all manner of evil. What do you do? You come back, you say we are rehabilitating them. You sew uniforms, you treat them right, they eat. And okay. but somewhere else in this nation, someone is just protesting on the street saying the condition in this nation is not right. It's okay, I have, to, I, it's okay. I have to come in here. 
You know, we understand that uh, there's a provision for repentant, uh, you know, terrorists. Boko Haram. There's a point where there was uh, th that was 806 of them. Uh, where the repentant uh, Boko Haram insurgents were given a form of rehabilitation. Some persons are saying maybe that could be a way of tackling this particular problem. And from your statement, you seem not to be okay with the fact that there should be any room for repentant Boko Haram insurgents. Listen, you have taken you have taken arm against the government, against the nation, and, you know, it's, it, there is no form of punishment. What I would have expected is that, yes, you repent, and you get certain, you know, maybe if you're to be sentenced for life, maybe you get like five years. There must be any form of punishment. Now, how do you just oppose that to the same nation where someone hasn't done anything? Your crime means that you say, we want this nation to be governed in a different way. Your crime is that you identify yourself, as in the case of IPO people, that they want a, another state. And that state that they say they want is nothing else than when you are married to a woman who says, darling, I'm no longer happy with this marriage. Can we look at these things you do to me? If you think we're not going to work it out, then let's separate rather for you to engage that woman in a conversation, what you do, you get you get your bows and you get your arrows and do what you know how to do best. So, I mean, the issue of stick and arrow, honestly, you know, the stick and carrot here does not necessarily hold water. Okay. Question that we must ask ourselves is, why is it that many times we have seen, we have seen a South African a missionary video where they said at the eve of handing over, after, you know, when the new government came in, they were on an oppression to wipe out Boko Haram, and they were stopped. We have seen where Ami tells us, oh, uh, these people got intel. How many in, in the infiltration alone in the army, in the, our security, in, in our uh, apparatchik, is not helping matters either. The question thereof is, how long shall we continue in this manner? Okay. When shall we now say enough is enough and deal with them? When we deal with others, look at, you know, when we deal with them, when we deal with others, we deal with them with heavy handedness. Okay, but it's okay. It's okay. Sector, okay. Okay. That we have, we have sentiments. Okay. Thank you so much. We have to link uh, to, you know, Chidi Kali now because we want his reaction in a particular one. Uh, Chidi Kali, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Now, uh, according to the UN, because I have to ask a very, que a very critical question from that one, the UN said dialogue with force but let's look at global practice where u.s does not and cannot negotiate with terrorists and we seem to emulate we seem to emulate the the u.s in certain occasions at this time should we actually dialogue with Boko Haram insurgents well um dialogue is not um a wrong touch is uh, just like uh, Elzoke said, uh, carrot and stick. It's a bit a global thing, but it depends who you are dialoguing with. Boko Haram are people that hate peace and civilization. There is nothing you're going to discuss or talk with them that they will embrace peace. We have seen many of them that after their so called um, um, rehabilitation, they go back to the front. As of 2015, May, we have around 5,136, 5,136 fighters in different prisons and detention centers, military barracks, that were arrested in action. Nobody can even say today this is the court where most of them have been tried. So automatically, I don't, I don't understand why we have to be wasting our time discussing Boko Haram and Buhari government or Hesman and Buhari government. Even if you cut the head of all Southerners and Christians to Boko Haram, they will still be fighting for your leg. So this is apparent because... Their objective has nothing to do with rehabilitation. Their objective was, just like they have announced several times, is to Islamize the rest of the country, period. Fulani Hesman, 
because there have been a problem in the Sahel and the other part of West African region, what they are doing is to do what? Kill people, grab their land. Okay. These are some of these people that we are imported during the election period. The government were able to do it, compensate them adequately. That was why we started hearing about Ruga, cattle colony. Okay. Telling Thank people you. to bring 700 acres of, of land okay. to do it. To give Thank to you. foreigners. Thank you so much, Chidi. And uh, now let's talk to uh, Ankyo. Hello, Ankyo. Hello. Yes. Uh, when we talk about insecurity in the nation, uh, there are recommendations from various uh, you know, regions uh, with emphasis to the southwest. Uh, the colonel did mention that earlier on. And uh, they are proposing regional security agencies. To you, would that be effective in the fight against insurgency or insecurity in Nigeria? Well, by uh, by regional, you're inferring therefore to um, to the six um, to the six geopolitical zones. Obviously, um, these uh, six geopolitical zones uh, uh, created um, uh, just before um, Abacha Abacha died, um, along with his uh, personal ambition to uh, to become a president. Well, we're stuck with the uh, the concept of the six geopolitical zones. And uh, which really um, means that all the six uh, Niger Delta states are in one zone. All the Ndibo uh, nationality states are in one zone. Yorubas are in one zone. The Niger Delta people have different ethnic nationalities. The same is unfortunately uh, true of the of the Middle Belt. Now, if um, I had said it uh, before this uh, question came uh, to me again, that we should devolve power and actually practice federalism. If we practice federalism, we will get ourselves to the point where when I was a little girl growing up, um, the, uh, the policing was done within the community. And if the policing is done at that level, uh, it gives more responsibility both to the person that may commit a crime and to the person that is going to apprehend the person who is going to commit, uh, commit a crime. Now, when you have this situation where people are brought into a community to police, and that's the same thing happening in America, where people are brought in from outside the community to police the community, they have no responsibility apart from the one that they are given to undertake. And so the, uh, the, the issue of security um, have failed in Nigeria. We discussed this at the uh, 2014, uh, 2014 National uh, Conference, and we agreed at the conference that there should be, we demanded, we called for um, an, um, a state security, a state police, um, unfortunately, uh, it was voted against. The Yorubas uh, 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 pushed it. It was voted against. But that is the only type of security that is going to work because it gives responsibility to the threatened. It gives responsibility to you and I to be part of our own um, um, security. Okay. Where the, uh, the, the federal government is in charge of security, security very clearly um, 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 have failed. And so it takes us back to what we are saying, which is that there is a section, a group of people in Nigeria that belongs, that believe Nigeria belongs to them and that they will do what they want with Nigeria and that nothing is going to come out of it. That is why we are talking. The state governors of the Niger Delta owe us a responsibility. I've said it over and over and over again. If they don't rise up and take this responsibility, they would have failed in their responsibility to us. And we will yes. so declare them failed. Okay. Watch on that earlier on. And uh, they are proposing regional security agencies. To you, would that be effective in the fight against insurgency or insecurity in Nigeria? Well, by uh, by regional, you're inferring therefore to um, to the six um, to the six geopolitical zones. Um, these uh, six geopolitical zones uh, uh, created um, uh, just before um, Abacha Abacha died, um, along with his uh, personal ambition to uh, to become a president. Well, we're stuck with the uh, the concept of the six geopolitical zones. 
and uh, which really um, means that all the six uh, Niger Delta states are in one zone. All the Ndibo uh, nationality states are in one zone. Yorubas are in one zone. The Niger Delta people have different ethnic nationalities. The same is unfortunately uh, true of the of the Middle Belt. Now, if um, I had said it uh, before this uh, question came uh, to me again, that we should devolve power and actually practice federalism. If we practice federalism, we will get ourselves to the point where when I was a little girl growing up, um, the, uh, the policing was done within the community. And if the policing is done at that level, uh, it gives more responsibility both to the person that may commit a crime and to the person that is going to apprehend the person who is going to commit, uh, commit a crime. Now, when you have this situation where people are brought into a community to police, and that's the same thing happening in America, where people are brought in from outside the community to police the community. They have no responsibility apart from the one that they are given to undertake. And so the, uh, the, the issue of security um, have failed in Nigeria. We discussed this at the uh, 2014, uh, 2014 National uh, Conference, and we agreed at the conference that there should be, we demanded, we called for um, an, um, a state security, a state police. Um, unfortunately, uh, it was voted against. The Yorubas uh, 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 pushed it. It was voted against. But that is the only type of security that is going to work because it gives responsibility to the threatened. It gives responsibility to you and I to be part of our own um, um, security. Okay. Where the, uh, the, the federal government is in charge of security. Security very clearly um, 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 have failed. And so it takes us back to what we are saying, which is that there is a section, a group of people in Nigeria that belongs, that believe Nigeria belongs to them and that they will do what they want with Nigeria and that nothing is going to come out of it. That is why we are talking. The state governors of the Niger Delta owe us a responsibility. I've said it over and over and over again. If they don't rise up and take this responsibility, they would have failed in their responsibility to us and we will yes. so declare them failed. Okay, well said from your perspective, Thank you, Briggs, there, human yes. rights advocates, as she talks about issues affecting nation. Uh, thank you so much, Thank you, Briggs. This is where we'll wrap it up on the show today. It's been a very intense time. As